So today I wanted to do something a little bit different. I'm going to talk about my core values of entrepreneurship. And up front, I want to make it very clear, it's my core values. <laughs> Not like these aren't universal values or universal truths. You're free to disagree with any or all of my values. Uh, I would probably think that you're wrong, but <laughs> it's okay to be wrong. And it's, uh, it's okay uh, overall. But uh, so uh, with that being said, I'll dive into uh, kind of my core values of entrepreneurship. And then so these are uh, things that I've developed over my life. Uh, so I've dabbled all throughout entrepreneurship pretty much my entire life. Like uh, every single business concept that you could ever think of, I've had started or tried on some level, at least just to try it out. Right? I like, uh, I think for me, a lot of people, when they look at me, they think of me as like a very smart person overall. Uh, and then I was kind of like born smart overall. And to me, like, I think there's some truth to that, but I would say that I was not born wise <laughs> overall. Like, I think that's a fair criticism of myself. And then uh, within that, like I, I, learn by doing right and by mistakes <laughs> and, and so i need to make a lot of mistakes in order to learn things uh, overall and so i have tried every form of uh, business that you can think of to learn those mistakes right and, and to learn from it and so these are just the lessons that i have learned from those mistakes overall and so uh lesson number one is that a solid moat is most important above all else and somewhere there exists a king of garbage and then so this is just a metaphor that i have in my head right and like the king of garbage is the way that i summarize this in, in my head that uh somewhere there's this mystical person and, and it's a real person that exists right like there's someone that uh they're like the ceo of uh, like the top garbage company like the waste management uh, i think is the top co company in north america right uh and then so that person is the king of garbage like their entire empire is based off of garbage literal garbage <laughs> and then they're million and billionaire from garbage right uh and then same thing like there's something like there's a king of poop like someone is like a millionaire from poop and 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 no matter what it is right like that, that the point is is that you could take the worst product uh, in the world and if you have a moat around it like if you have yourself some sort of established uh, barriers within that then that is most important above the product above anything else like your product could be gold compared to poop if you don't know anyone that sells gold and you know uh, all farmers that could all use fertilizer then you're in the poop business right like and then that's how it goes right? that's your moat because you know the farmers and the other people don't and so whatever your moat is in that instance is what you should go for and i think like like number one I, like, a lot of people focus wrongly on like all I need is the best product. And if I build it, they'll come. <laughs> it's like, I don't know, like I can tell you again from experience, like you can have the most innovative product on the planet. You can scream from the top of your lungs. This is uh, revolutionary to the world and no one will care. <laughs> That's just the bottom line. Uh, and then the, uh, so moving on to number two, number two is, is that digital products over physical products, all else being equal. I used to be the opposite on this, right? Like uh, 15, 20 years ago, I'm old. I was uh, like all in on physical products as opposed to digital products. But like it's more and more, um, it's just digital products. So a widget is a widget, right? We've established that from the core concept and core value number one, that like a garbage, you can make it from garbage, from poop, it doesn't matter. And then so we're talking about widgets at the end of the day, right? And so when you're talking about uh, widgets, you have two different types of widgets, a digital widget and a physical widget. And then all else being equal, it's just easier, cheaper, all around to deal with digital widgets than it is to deal with physical widgets. It's harder to deal with physical widgets. You have to store them, the inventory, you have to deal with shipping, uh, packaging, anything that you're doing no matter what the physical widget is <laughs> and then with digital widgets you don't have 
those same barriers. Like it's uh, so it's just easier all around. And so all else being equal, it's more profitable. It's easier to handle everything else. Like everything about it just makes it where digital products are better. It's uh, to me, digital products overall break the capitalism equation, quite frankly, right? So uh, to me, capitalism overall is a system that is based off of uh, limited resources that, that, and limited, um, you have a resource that you can you put to limited uses, right? Uh, if I take a, a piece of steel I and I shape it into something, I can't reshape it into something else or or it's uh, it's diminished the value of reshaping it into something else right so it's uh, a limited resource with alternative uses and then so my job is is to make it into the best use possible and then so in that steel instance i'd probably make it into paper clips right like paper clips would be the uh, most profit possible that i could make from my piece of steel overall if i were to break it down uh, but with digital products, it breaks that equation, right? Because I can just, a digital product is a code. I can just make more code. And then I, it's artificial uh, with regards towards any sort of, um, uh, anything that is like not having the product there, right? Um, and so uh, to me, it, it's just overall much better to deal with digital products as opposed to physical products, artificial scarcity. And then so moving on to the third point, which is blazing your own path within established industries is a true innovation. Uh, and so to me, a big point, I talk about this a lot, is throughout my career, one of the big people uh, that I looked to throughout this was the founder of Marketo. And so I spent a lot of time early on in my career coming up within Silicon Valley uh, and then at conventions and things like that. And then so I would often hear the the creator of Marketo at that time, he was pitching a product called Engageo, uh, and he would talk about fishing with spears and he created essentially the concept of, or he like coined the term and the concept of account-based marketing. <laughs> account-based marketing existed way before uh, he coined the term overall and, and people were doing the strategy uh, and everyone would do it, but it, it wasn't a buzzword within marketing, right? But he made it a buzzword within marketing and then like i noticed like at around this time it was gives key and then so i noticed he did it twice he did it with marketo and engageo and then since then he's done it three times marketo engageo and credio uh he, he, uh, everything that ends with oh right he just he, he sells it and exits for millions of dollars and that's his strategy and he's uh, gotten quite good at that strategy overall but it's always blazing his own path in established industries. In Marketo, it was email marketing, right? Email marketing is very established. Like there's like, Marketo wasn't the first one onto the scene with regards towards email marketing by any stretch of the imagination whatsoever, right? But it's blazing your own path in the established industry. And then uh, like the, the Apple approach, right? Like uh, making yourself unique within a established industry is your innovation uh, and you can ride on that for a long time and then so moving on to number four my fourth core value of entrepreneurship is to always focus on scalable systems and not on products again like going back to this product right like the product i think that a lot of people get way too wrapped up in the product either that they think that their product is the greatest thing ever or that they think that they can't move forward because they don't have a product that's the greatest thing ever and then so both of those things are uh the furthest thing from the truth possible right so again if you're focusing on scalable systems and not products then you're putting yourself up and you're setting yourself up far more for success uh, we can use the example of right now we're going through like kind of like the ai revolution right uh and then so within that you notice and i've noticed a lot of people the very first part and area that people gravitated towards was uh kind of like gpt wrappers and creating all of these 
products around GPT that are starting to fall off hard, right? Like Humane AI, Rabbit. A lot of companies went hard that are just all that burnt out now and worthless because they went all in on the product as opposed to scalable systems, right? And then so to me, it's uh, I haven't released a lot of products. I've released a lot of workflows and a lot. Of, so again, a lot of systems, right? And then to me, taking a step back, that's exactly how I've found that AI works overall. And it's it just caters to that system and that process. And so it just works out really well for me overall in that. But it's that focus on systems and not products. It will always lead you to long-term success. Uh, and then that leads us to number five, uh, which is don't ever let yourself get toasted. And then, so there, if you're, there is the um, possibility and the realm of short-term success, and it's a good business model for a while, right? Like disrupting incumbents. And the example that I use specifically within this and why I don't ever let yourself get toasted is uh, to me, the example of Quiznos and Quiznos versus Subway, right? And then, so uh, if you're not old like me, there was a period of time where Quiznos was like head, at, like they were like, knocking on subway's door <laughs> like, like subway was like like yeah like on their death now like because of of quiznos and then their biggest like quiznos like punched them in the face and like came out of nowhere and like socked them right because it was um it's toasted was their slogan right like and then so it's like like why would you do the like cold sub from subway when you can do the toasted sub from quiznos and then so everyone like starts going to quiznos right Quiznos takes off and they they are hugely successful as a result of that, but they don't differentiate themselves in any other way whatsoever, right? They focus on the product, they have a revolutionary product at the time, which is it's toasted, so they do something that is different than their competitor, uh, and then they don't differentiate themselves in any other way whatsoever. And then so what does Subway do? Subway does one very simple thing to knock sub Quiznos out overnight. And that very simple thing is they install toasters in all subways. That's why you have toasters now in subways, right? Do you want it toasted in subway? That's all that it took to take out Quiznos, who was at one point like going to knock on death's door of subway, but all they had to do was install toasters. And so don't ever let yourself get toasted. Like if your product differentiation is, is it's toasted, then realize that you're in that for a short term and then realize that you need a, a better product differentiator than it's toasted because your competitor is just going to install toasters and then you're toasted. Uh, and then so those are kind of my overall five core values of entrepreneurship. Uh, and if you like this type of content, please like and subscribe. Thank you very much.